Namaste India. Keswe Ramet. You know it, it's Mumbai. I'm in India. I arrived this morning around 4 to 5 a.m. at the hotel. But I had a decent night's rest, or you can't call it a night's rest, decent morning's rest. And I'm all fresh and ready to roll over here in India. I'm here to meet up with a lot of people. I'm also here to watch that huge game coming up this weekend between India and South Africa. But I was in Paris and I want to talk about that as well. The Springboks won the World Cup. We beat the All Blacks in the final, 12-11. I was there in the stands. I got to meet the Springbok team at the airport this morning. Just a dream come true situation for me. But enough of that. We'll cover more of that later on. I'm here for the cricket. There's a lot happening in this year's Cricket World Cup. There's a lot of teams that are going up, a lot of teams going down. All right, let's start with... Hold on, I see Mike Atherton. I was going to cover England anyway, so let's quickly go and talk to him while he's here, taking a chance. <laughs> the player focus for this week will be... I wanted him in the side. And he is there, but he is struggling a little bit. You need to know exactly what you're doing. And in fact, I actually want to show you guys. You can have this <laughs> My voice. Nice little surprise. Someone very famous, very English, just walked in here. And us South Africans love our English friends <laughs> especially after the rugby world cup <laughs> mike atherton it's great to have you here. i don't have an extra mic so i'm just going to pull this no off problem. um it's quite hot and sweaty over in mumbai and that's actually the first topic i wanted to talk about that game england played here at the, at the one stadium now i've experienced it before but your average fan would have absolutely no idea what the guys went through bowling first that day the funny funny thing is they won the toss what are your thoughts on the on the heat here over in, um, in india and um, england's performance so far well, I mean, it's quite warm now, but it's nowhere near as hot and humid as it was on that particular day. Um, it was a brutal day. I think all of us were surprised that England bowled first on that day because they put themselves under significant pressure. You know, bowlers were cramping up. Somebody like David Willey hadn't played much in the tournament anyway. He was cramping up. Obviously, Reese Topley bust his finger, so the bowlers were under significant pressure against the team that likes to bat first as well. You know, it's a must-win game for England. I think most of us would have preferred to see South Africa chasing than setting. Absolutely. And then the, the reasons for England struggling this, this tournament, preparation perhaps. But then I looked at South Africa's preparation coming into this as well. Also not, not much better. Um, your thoughts? Well, it's a puzzle. England have been a great side for a long time in one-day cricket. Um, none of us have really come up with an adequate explanation apart from the fact that sport sometimes can be a bit confounding and confusing it doesn't always go to plan I think one of the issues for England has been because England's test team were in such a state about 18 months ago they put a lot of focus and resources into test cricket you know the Brendan McCullum, Ben Stokes the kind of basball project and it meant that they just slightly didn't play that many ODIs. And when they did play them, they didn't play with their first choice team because often players like Root and Bairstow were in the test match team. So they didn't have that much prep time together before this World Cup. But that's, I mean, you're trying to make excuses, really. <laughs> um, you know, for, a, for such a good bunch of players, they've really fallen way short of their best here. Yeah, very true. Still defending champs. Um, at, talking about baseball, and I mean, very briefly, uh, I'm a big fan of, of the, the thought of playing aggressively and always sort of find a way to aggressively play your way out of a difficult situation. In this tournament, I saw a very interesting stat. England's got the, the most amount num of number of dismissals of a good length out of all the teams. Um, and that's perhaps come down to that, guys trying to actually force their way out of bad situations. Yeah, I mean, their players do play aggressively generally. They've got a lot of good players in there. Um, they just they just haven't found any form. If you look at all the individuals, you know, people like Bairstow, Root, Stokes, top, top players haven't found a way of, of, of finding their best form. They've chopped and changed a little bit. They made three changes before the South Africa game, made three more before the Sri Lanka game. I mean, that's a consequence of not playing well, but it, yeah. it kind of destabilizes things as well. So probably lots of issues. Um, and some good teams around, you know, they just played India in look now. India look a top-notch yeah. outfit. They've got a fantastic bowling unit, no, no uh, weak links there. And 
your team, you know, coming good as well. Look, powerful batting lineup. They look good. Um, bizarrely, England not out of it. Imagine that coming back and, and finding amazing. a way. It is amazing. It's like the tournament you can't get knocked out of. They've lost five out of six <laughs> games, but mathematically still, still got a very, very slim chance. But given their net run rate and the fact that it would just be a load of other results that would have to go in their favour, it's very hard to see anything other than England not qualifying. The key thing for them now, actually, is to get in the top seven or eight because that's what you need to qualify for the Champions Trophy in 2025. And if England don't qualify for that, that would be a, quite an outcome. Thank you very much for your time. I wanted to ask you many more questions about Alan Donald and the <laughs> Rugby World Cup and all I sorts. I bumped into him, actually. <laughs> and uh, He's obviously here with Bangladesh, so it was great to catch up with him in, in Dharamshala. He's a lot friendlier now, 20 <laughs> years after retirement, than he was before. It's one of those, those rivalries that really inspired me and a lot of other youngsters to go and just play the game and, and love it. So yeah. thank you very much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your time over here in Mumbai. Will do. Great to see you. Thanks, Atlas. So that was Mike Atherton. We were quite lucky to catch up with him. Uh, I, th I thought some really good answers. Talking about England, uh, uh, even touched on Alan Donald there. Uh, I wanted to dig into it a little bit deeper, but unfortunately um, the man is busy and I could only ask him a few questions. But let's take a little bit of a walk over here, the gardens of Mumbai and discuss a very interesting topic, controversial to say the least. It's about the Champions Trophy that will happen in 2025. Apparently no one knew about it. And all of a sudden only eight teams in this World Cup will qualify for the 2025 Champions Trophy, only the top eight teams. So on that note, let's have a quick look at the points table. We've seen the points table, only the top eight will qualify. The Champions Trophy is a very special tournament. I've taken part in quite a few. And a bit of news for you, South Africa actually won the very first Champions Trophy many, many years ago, but it still happened. Um, I even spoke to Mark Boucher about one of their game plans I think it was the semis or the finals where they had a team analysis meeting about how they're going to get the opposing team's batsmen out. And he said, after the game, they sat in the change room and they said to each other, we got them out in all the areas we said we were not supposed to bowl. <laughs> so that's Mark Boucher for you. I'll get hold of Mark Boucher. I'll get him on the show and we'll cover that story because it's quite interesting how they actually ended up winning that tournament. But it's all to play for. The top teams will qualify for the 2025 Champions Trophy. And it's all to play for yeah, at the Cricket World Cup 2023. The Afghan dream lives on. Why are they playing so well at this year's World Cup? A lot of them are playing in the IPL and I think that's the main reason. I think of Rashid Khan, Nabi, Noor. A lot of them are playing in the IPL, picking up a lot of experience. And where's this year's World Cup? In India. I think the Afghan players have played some really good cricket, especially the batters. They have a coach, a batting coach, in the name of Jonathan Trott, who have been very particular about the way he's helped them with game plans and how to chase, specifically chase totals around 270, 280, and comfortably getting there. He has broken it down into smaller targets. We saw him with the signs on the side of the field the other night, and breaking the targets down into smaller goals, smaller goals which helped them achieve these amazing run chases. But they are playing in the Netherlands next, which shouldn't be too hard for them. After that, it's South Africa and Australia. Not easy. There's a small chance for Afghanistan still to qualify for the knockouts. Will it happen? We'll have to wait and see. And talking about Australia, they've been playing some really good cricket. Let's analyze why. Out of the dark, Australia, the informed team at this year's World Cup all of a sudden. Obviously India right at the top, South Africa playing well, but Australia have won four in a row now. They've been playing some incredible cricket, all-round package, finding the right form at the right time, as they always seem to do at Cricket World Cups. Why are they playing so well? David Warner, the informed man, when he gets into form, he doesn't get out of it. Just been incredible how they have scored runs up the order, and that is what's given the bowling attack, the freedom to express themselves. Australia have scored three 350 plus totals in this year's World Cup. That's never happened before. Incredible batting by the top order, specifically David Warner. You can see David Warner's stats right here. The man has played some really good cricket. Why is he so good? He's quick between the wickets. He puts pressure on the bowlers. He's got no flaws. Where not too long ago, everyone was talking about him being out of form. All of a sudden, he's in the form of his life. He's busy at the crease. He loves the new ball and he loves working with the ball, both on the offside and the leg side. 
The bolus plans to him need to be very clear, very straight, top of off. The margin for error is very, very small when you're bowling to him. But he's been the kingpin and the reason for the big scores in this year's Cricket World Cup. And as I said, they are peaking at the right time once again. Look out for Australia. Player focus for this week is Shreyas Ayer, one of my favourite players. I wanted him in that side. He is there now, but he is struggling with one area of his game, and that's the short ball. Now, it's not nice and it's not comfortable, but he's struggling with the short ball. There's nothing worse than it for a batsman. He's doing a few things wrong. I feel he's trying to play the ball out of the bowler's hands. The minute the ball's released, he sees it short and he just wants to get on top of it and sort of impose his... his um, his control over the game instead of actually playing it off the wicket. He's missing out on the line and he's ending up being cramped up. Let me show you. Give me that Insta360. <laughs> so, the th so the thing is, he picks up the line, or the length rather, but the line not so well. So he knows that it's short, he wants to play it, but he ends up being cramped up. The ball is in the danger area. You don't want the ball to be around here because you end up pulling away with your head and you lose the line on and the length of the ball. The ball goes up in the air. How do you control it? You control it by having the ball just outside your body or to come on this side. So it can't be on your body. Shreyas wants to pull well. He, picks, he needs to pick up the line. He knows now it's short. He needs to pick up the line. Is it outside my eye line? Yes, it is. So I can really front dog it and hit it with power through mid-wicket. If it's on my body, I need to glide this side and help it along to fine leg or square leg or even beat the two of them for four runs. His problem is he's being cramped up because he is thinking about the short ball. The minute he knows it's short, he just wants to hit. He's not thinking about the line. You need to get your body away from the ball and either outside or just outside this side. You need to move around. That's his problem. He's playing it out of the bowler's hands and that is premeditating, which is never good when, when it comes to batting. Enough of the player focus this week. It's hot out here. It's humid. I'm sweating. We're in Mumbai. And you know it's humid over here. So let's go inside and do the 360 quiz for this week in there. Come with me. In last week's 360 quiz, the answer was when South Africa scored 438 runs at the Wankedi Stadium over here in Mumbai. It was in 2015, and that was the year when we lost in that semi-final of the World Cup. We were very disappointed. We came over here to Mumbai and we played one of the best ODI series of our lives. It was a good game and a very memorable one. I remember it was hot, but we batted first, luckily. Not like England, bowling first in that heat. Very clever captain, right? <laughs> in this week's 360 quiz, please name me the six batters who have scored more than 36s in World Cups. And the hint is, I'm one of those. All the best with that quiz. It's great to be back here in India. I'm in Mumbai, as you know. It's hot and sweaty over here. And I miss being hot and sweaty over there in the Wankedi Stadium. Some great memories of being here. I absolutely love the food. I love the culture over here. And I love staying fit, so I will be spending a bit of time in the gym too. But the main focus will be the Cricket World Cup. I'll be over there in Kolkata with that big game between South Africa and India. Who's going to win this, week, this year's World Cup? Australia finding form at the right time. South Africa playing well. India playing well. New Zealand over there. Or will Afghanistan or maybe England or someone like that surprise us? towards the back end of the tournament. It's all to play for. Thank you for joining me in this week's 360 show. I'll catch you guys with 360 Live.